Hi everyone, so this is going to be a tutorial here addressing an issue that I've had with Substance Painter and I'm using the latest Substance Painter um, minus maybe one patch update that came out a week or two ago, but this is the latest summer of 2018 edition. And the limitation that I wanted to address was using a drop shadow on a fill layer. Sounds pretty simple and uh, drop shadows are something that I just kind of like to do even for a little bit of occlusion around things that the um, built-in baker for occlusion can address like fill layers that I've painted and maybe it can address it I'm not sure um, in some generator or something like that but what I'll end up doing is using a lot of procedural fill layers and then there is a mask here on the fill layer and I know the swatch isn't showing but that's why I um, hovered over and show you the mask to do that hover over your mask hold down alt and left click and you'll see here in the viewport we've gone to mask uh, view and you can kind of look at your masks that way um, ignore the head for now it's on a different texture set and I'm not working on it um, I just brought it into the scene for reference um, when you want to return out of mask view just hold down control and left click on the mask so first let me show you the limitation right this is the fill layer I've created for the base of her undergarments and she has no anatomy details or anything um, you know vulgar and inappropriate like that underneath but uh, this is just I'm gonna put it on the texture and not model it because she will be wearing clothing the entire time and this is kind of just this convenient thing to have underneath because her clothing is going to be physics driven driven and she may have some outfits where the clothing comes up and exposes some of her areas that should be private and I just want to have something to kind of cover that in game in any possible scenario and I thought if I just do a rough texture covering underneath um, that'll be good enough right and it's not even done yet but one of the things I wanted to do was add a little bit of skin reddening around where her undergarments are touching her skin and I wanted to add a little bit of what would look like occlusion right as if this was geometry and I was going to use a drop shadow to do that because I can't bake the occlusion to it without a mesh there for it to kind of bake the occlusion around so first let me show the limitation so let's create a fill layer, another one, and we will um, color it something obscene. And uh, what we'll do is we'll right click on that and add a black mask, fill mask, right? And we're going to do that traditional painting black or white, I'm full white, one, on this mask so that we can kind of expose or hide some of the red. So let's just expose some of the red. And there's our shape. And it's being defined by this mask so intuitively you would think on this mask I can right click I can add a filter under the filter selection I can go drop shadow and it would use the mask black and white information to determine the shape right the black and white does show the silhouette of a shape and we would turn the opacity up and the spread all the way up just for testing and the size down and play with the distance on the angle and we see absolutely no drop shadow and you're not gonna even if we put the drop shadow on the actual uh, fill layer itself, you're not going to see it there either. It just doesn't want to work on the fill layer. It will, however, work if we create a just a basic layer like that, like a paint layer, and then paint, right-click, add filter, turn off all these other channels. I just want to show the color for now. And then do drop shadow, and voila, we have a beautiful little drop shadow with a lot of cool controls for it and so it works on a paint layer but the paint layer kind of goes against the idea of the non-destructive procedural way that you want to work in substance you want to work on these fill layers so let's work around that with the fill layer how would we do this the way to do this is create another fill layer add fill layer we'll drag it underneath we will just for these purposes I'll just because we only want the color shading information we'll just leave the color channel active and we'll color it something gross like red we will right click on that add a black mask and conveniently we can hover over the mask for our original uh, fill layer and we can right click and we can copy mask we will hover over the mask for our drop shadow fill layer and we will paste into mask okay so what we have now and you can see a little bit of the fringe of it 
on her undergarment here the red, right? We're going to exploit that to our purposes. And what we're going to do is we're going to right click on the mask and we're going to add filter and we're going to add a blur. And right away you can see a little bit of that kind of working. And I can spread it out. Now conveniently, I'll show you something that isn't a drop shadow that this worked for. That was really convenient because I used red. If I set this to something like soft light or something like that, and then I turn it down nice and low, I instantly got my kind of skin reddening where her undergarments kind of touch her skin. It's a little extreme there. But now I can go and play with that, and I can add another kind of filter generator or something to kind of break that reddening up. Uh, but the principle's the same, right? So let's go back. We can actually set it to multiply. We'll go full. And then for the purposes of a drop shadow or occlusion or something like that, um, we have that set. So what we're doing is we're utilizing this, this mask blur, and you can increase the intensity of it or how small and narrow it is. And uh, there you go. And we can combine those. So I could layer a little bit of that reddening, soften it out like this, and then I could have another fill layer that has this multiplying over with this little drop shadow here. If you don't like how intense it is, obviously go in here and turn that down. Okay? And it provides like an occlusion um, exactly around where all the surfaces touch each other. So it's not, di it's not directional at the moment in that um, there would be less shadowing at the top because light's coming from the top and more shadowing underneath. But there is a workaround for that. And to do that, you would click on your mask here. We'll right click, we'll add another filter, and we will add a transform. And the transform in <laughs> substance is really touchy. But uh, here we go. Your offset X and your offset Y, you have to do really small values, and the slider really doesn't work really great trying to slide it. I really wish they would increase like the sensitivity of that, well, or lessen the sensitivity, maybe more incremental. So now we have more of a directional drop shadow where you can see that our shadow is kind of falling underneath of the objects, more so than at the top. And that actually looks quite a bit more uh, natural, right? We can even go back to, because of this non-destructive workflow to our blur, and we can even blur it even more. And we get that kind of really nice natural drop shadow underneath of where her, you know, her breasts would be, or underneath this, this groin area here, or even the backside. So that right there is what I think, and always want to make sure you uh, name these properly so you can remember what they are. And ideally I would have called that underwear drop shadow, but that's just an outstanding way to maintain using fill layers, um, but also allow yourself to use a drop shadow with fill layers. I really hope this helps a ton of people because, uh, you know, I scoured the algorithmic forums and uh, Google and websites looking for workarounds to get a drop shadow filter to work on a fill layer, and so far it didn't. Um, but this is a good workaround. Hopefully this helps you fellow artists and students out there. Have a good day.